We got one more thing to talk about, just like Apple had one more thing to talk about. And it was the first generation of a new product category. A watch. No, just kidding. It's a headset. It's a, it's an AR VR headset. And this, again, c- completes the theme of Apple not wanting to use words that other companies use. At no point did they want to say, this is an AR VR headset. No, they they didn't say virtual reality very often. Mm-hmm. They actually called it spatial computing yes. before they said AR VR. But the point is, it's a headset that you put on your face that costs three thousand five hundred dollars will come out early next year and uh well they gave a bunch of demos of it i got to try it Mm -hmm. it has a bunch of really interesting tech let's talk about it yeah yeah um so on the like xr extended reality uh spatial computing idea front Mm -hmm. i actually i was thinking about this all night last night i was like writing about my feelings about this headset last night just to get my feelings out about it I actually think that In the journal app. No, oh, it's not <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. journal. App. I actually think that the extended reality, like spatial computing, phrasing is really good for this headset because it is not really supposed to be a VR headset. Like it is. So, for those listening and also watching, there's like this digital. There's a digital crown on it mm-hmm. that you can turn, and as you turn it, it takes you from the real world into a more digital world. And you can just, on the fly, whenever you feel like it, put yourself more in a digital world or more in a real world. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a really good idea because virtual reality headsets, you only are able to be in VR. And for so many people, that means that the only use case for using a VR headset is basically like playing games or that kind of stuff, right? Whatever is in a virtual world. Yeah. Yeah. But that means that you're going to only be in that virtual world and you have no other options. And most people don't want to be immersed in this virtual world for a long period of time because, one, just evolutionarily, people don't like not being able to see or feel what's around them. Like there are predators that could attack you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that Apple wants this to feel just like an extension of what you're already doing which is what AR was originally sort of intended for. And the reason I think that Google Glass was like one of the best inventions ever, but it just got completely destroyed because of privacy concerns. Um, But I think their point with this is that they want you to mostly just like be in real life, but then be able to like use those experiences when you want to. Interesting. Um, So yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk more about like what the headset is. Yeah, I'll give you so I'll give you the breakdown basically of controls versus other headsets. So if you've ever seen an AR VR headset, typically a VR headset is this plastic shell you strap to your face and then you get a set of controllers or you can do stuff with your hands. This is a metal and glass headset that you strap to your face. There are no controllers being made for it. It is controlled entirely by your hands, your eyes, your eyes and your voice. The eyes is the craziest this to me is like the big difference really with like an apple product obviously there's a lot more to talk about but really it feels like the innovation here was ui again like it reminds me a lot of the first iphone Mm -hmm. where you have this like pinch to zoom moment on stage and everyone goes whoa you can just pinch the screen and make it bigger and it seems so obvious now but the same thing happens in that headset where instead of like the normal experience which is i have the controller i point out in space and i hold a trigger and i like drag something In this one, I just look at what I want to touch, and then I just touch my fingertips together, and it clicks it. And your fingertips can be anywhere. They can be in your lap. They can be off to the side. Almost anywhere. Almost anywhere. As long as you're in the front somewhere. But (laughs) honestly, I try. so I did my demo. Like I I did it by accident. Like on the couch next to me, my finger's connected, and I clicked something by accident. I should say you have to try to be out of range. Sure, of course. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it like this. Yeah, I I heard people talking about how they were like, (laughs) testing it and like yeah. it does get to I mean, a so point. or if like I guess something is like in the way of your hands. Right. It? Yeah. So there are cameras, two on the front, two on the side, two facing down. So generally think about that. That's yeah. where it's sensing things. It's a 180 degree field of view basically. Yeah. It's got a super high resolution display for each eye, well over 4K. It's the sharpest VR headset I've ever seen. It has a lot of cameras and the two on the front are for stereoscopic 3D and it does full color pass through. It's the best pass through in any headset I've ever seen. Definitely. And then the eye tracking is borderline telepathic. 
So what happens is with the headset, you start with a calibration thing. So it shows some dots on the screen, like a dot appears and it shrinks down and you look at it and then another dot appears and you look at it. And so it's looking at your irises. There's a bunch of sensors on the inside to see what your eyes are looking at. And then once it's done with that, it opens up, you get to the home screen and the UI is there. You hit the digital crown, the apps show up and you just look at the icon and it highlights like me. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. others are still, and you look at another icon and it's like, oh, me. And it's this really interesting like telepathic dance where like I look all over the screen and as soon as my eye stops, it, it highlights exactly what yeah. I'm looking at. There's a home screen bar at the bottom. There's a little icon to like drag to make windows bigger. God, there's so much to talk about. I, know. I look at a window, I select it and I push it back in space and with incredible precision and responsiveness, it moves it around the room exactly mm -hmm. where I want in any UI direction. There are shadows cast under the windows in the room so I'm moving a window back and I see it cast a shadow. I have Safari going, I'm scrolling up and down. You know, with like the physics of like an iPhone scrolling, you can like scroll it up and catch it and like toss it around. You can do all of that in the air in real time. Unbelievably responsive, Yeah, more so than any I've ever seen. I mean, I tried the Quest Pro and the Quest Pro is as close as I've seen to that. There's a PSVR 2. Um, just this one is, it's the highest quality UI of any headset I've ever seen with the pass-through and the eye control and the hands and everything. Um, a lot of other interesting features. There's the iris scanning unlocking. It's called what? Uh, iris? No, what is it called? Uh, optic ID. Optic, optic ID. Thank you. Optic ID. Yeah. Optic ID. <clears throat> just because your eye is as unique as your fingerprint. So that's cool. Um, borderline, uh, just, borderline creepy. <laughs> borderline creepy, but at least it's just like IR cameras it and it's sense, fine. for sure on like how to unlock something like that. And then I think the most iconic piece of this whole thing is this headset appears to be transparent, but it is not. What you're seeing when you're looking at the headset and there are eyes looking back at you, it's actually just a sort of a, it's an OLED screen flipped around showing what your eyes are computed to look like on the inside. Uh, but really, it only shows up when you're in some sort of a pass-through pass mode and you can see other things in the room. Yeah. As soon as you're not in a pass-through mode, if you're watching a movie or you Animation. can't see anything, it shuts it down, you don't see the eyes, and it's just like an animation. And this is one of those things that is, it's fascinating. It's one, I don't think we're gonna see any other headset do this. I think it adds a lot of cost, it adds a lot of weight, and it adds no benefit to the person actually wearing the headset. It's mainly just so that you can wear it without looking like a meme. The eye thing? <laughs> yeah. I think the eye thing makes you look like a meme. Well, it does. Yeah, I but it, it, I think they were specifically thinking about how do we make this acceptable to wear out in public? But and no, so don't do it. Also, I, I do think <laughs> they would argue that the part that is benefiting the person wearing it is in that situation, someone comes into your field of view and you're trying to communicate with them is you don't have to take it off now. Yeah. Or that's what they want you. They mm -hmm. don't want you to take it off. Mm -hmm. And like that taking it on and off is, is benefit. I'm just, you, this is their Air argument, quotes. not mine. Mm -hmm. It's beneficial to the person wearing it because you're not, taking it off hmm. i think the weird thing about the eyes is like i think it shows one of the coolest things that i think they did really well and then everyone's only focusing on the eyes which is kind of the weird part I, it's really cool that you can have windows open and someone comes close enough to you where it assumes you want to like put, they want to talk to you like you're not stuck in this this so VR world it has like a feature for this. that part is really yeah. cool where it comes forward and it pushes them through the screen and that's yeah. when it activates <clears throat> the eyes because then you're communicating with them mm -hmm. that really is really cool it's and it's only when you make eye contact with each other so they can be like in here but only when you like look at them they sort of like fade into your virtual reality yeah well they need to be able to they fade in if they just get close enough, I don't think so. They well, you can't make eye contact slightly. with someone the, if there's the, a window. Okay, so they, right. you can because you can you can look over it in that direction. It's not yeah, eye but contact. if they it's come like behind if looking... you, if they come from behind a screen, you can't make eye contact with them. They're so not always they, going to make it into those spaces. If they come from behind a screen, it tr it goes like ten percent more transparent than usual, and you can see that there is a face yeah. there. And, and then, then if you, you choose to look them, at the face, then they, they sort of like in. fog it's, away. It still like finds a way to fade someone in when it thinks there's someone in close enough to you rather than just being completely oblivious to the right, outside right, right, right. world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is a feature I have not seen on other headsets yet. It's, it's an incredible feature. Incredible. Yeah. Like the, the way that it does it is so amazing. Like the, yeah. just the, the fluency of them like slowly fading in the, and then you kind of look at them and they fade in a lot more. And then if even if you're in full virtual mode, if you're looking at them, suddenly you've just got this person that's there as yeah. well. It's 
freaking amazing. That it's sounds so kind cool. of creepy, but also is way less creepy than somebody just standing outside and I you agree. don't know they're there. So like, I, I think that is an awesome feature. <clears throat> yeah. But then that feature, everyone's just thinking about the stupid eyes that come yeah. in front of it, which is yeah. like, it's so cool and so memeable at the same time. Like the whole crowd was laughing when they kept showing eyes coming through. It was like, really interesting. Headset. So just disclosure, David and I have tried the headset mm -hmm. uh -huh. and we've gotten our demos of it and there was like a 30 minute full demo of a bunch of different features. I wanna hit on a couple other features and things we got to try. Mm -hmm. One is you can do FaceTimes in the headset. It's its own computer with an M2 chip and an R1 chip, which mm -hmm. is doing all the real time processing of the sensors. And you can jump on a FaceTime and it, you don't have to have it paired to an iPhone or anything. It's connected to Wi-Fi. And you pick up the FaceTime and there's like a window or two windows or however many people are on and you can see everyone's FaceTimes and their video feeds. But what do they see? Oh, funny you ask. Uh, they will see a 3D reconstructed version of you that is sort of animated in real time to match the way you look. And you actually have to scan yourself in by turning the headset around and scan yourself <laughs> as a registration process. Yeah. And so then there's this like, high-res cartoon version of you. And I actually got to chat with one of them, which I assume you did too. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Google Starline-ish, a yeah. little bit worse quality, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was, that was interesting the, to see. The demos made it look like, and you guys can confirm this, like mm -hmm. the quality of your face in Starline was better, but the like cutout of Starline was really rough. And that looked like the actual image of it was better, just like lower quality. Well, so there's no background or anything. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like a floating. But Starline had like that weird, like squiggly cutout. Yeah, because they tried to put you on like a fake is, background. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Starline was a million times more immersive because it's a 60 inch real screen. But this was more just like a little floating window in front of you. Yeah, and a like a Wii Sports avatar. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It was sort of this weird, like you know how Meta announced the the really high resolution because there's that meme of of Zuck like standing in front of the Eiffel Tower like looking like worse than a Wii graphic <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then they're like no 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 this is what it's actually going to look like in the future and they have like this way higher resolution you're going to be able to scan him. yourself in yeah it basically is like that and it's this weird like you know it's digital because it's got this weird texture to that's what it was, yeah that's what I was trying to explain like it looks from the things and like you looking at it was probably yeah. Almost looks like, do you know when they like blend a bunch of faces together to show you like the like what the average person would look yes. like? Or like if we were all together, it, it's got it that vibe. Your features. It's like an yeah. uncanny valley thing. And I, I don't know if people are going to respond well to this. They might get used to it, um, but it's just strange. Like previously, Apple, you know, in FaceTime allowed you to be a Memoji. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's so far away from Uncanny Valley that people were just like used to that. It's just a funny thing. But this feels like what a sci-fi representation of like people are in holograms. This one I feel like is why you have to look forward into the future because this is the first gen version of it. Yeah. But let's say theoretically in the future, this gets much better, much smaller and much higher quality. Yeah. Then maybe it's acceptable to like jump on a FaceTime with mm -hmm. a high res animated version of you and there's yeah. hand tracking and face tracking and stuff, Yeah, I guess. It's got like, it's got good um, mapping of your face though. Cause it's, it's got those downwards facing cameras that are seeing your facial expressions. So it's mm -hmm. not just guessing what your facial expressions are. The one thing that was pulling me out of it was like, the movements around your eye, right? Mm -hmm. Like it knows the direction you're looking because it has the iris scanners and stuff. There's a lot more happening. There's a lot more or happening that you're not even really noticing actively, like in your cheekbones and your eyebrows and stuff that those were pretty static. And mm -hmm. that's why it felt Well, you also have weird. a thing pressing up against yeah. your face at that point. So those yeah. things can't really move exactly. in that situation. Exactly, yeah. so yeah, that was strange. This, um, this feels like a kind of weird, like, when you're gonna FaceTime your friends or your family and you're the only person with this, are they gonna be like, I don't know how I feel about this. Probably this is a good. bunch this of people in weird. 2D and it's you're just like a, Well, and it just feels I, really impersonal. To, right, I said this in the fake. video. Like yeah. when I'm FaceTiming friends and family, I'm trying to see my friends and family, like actually see them. Right. And at this particular moment, this 2023 version of it, it does not feel like I'm actually seeing the person. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future, it's so high res and accurate and it's a recent scan. Because this is the thing, I could scan myself a month ago and I'm using that old scan. It's like, that's not what I look like right now. Mm -hmm. But maybe it eventually gets really good and it feels like I'm talking to a person. But right now, it feels worse than a FaceTime. This is like a better version of an audio call, but worse than a video call. I was going to say, this looks like a yeah. better version of the like meta like AR VR 
business stuff. This feels like a business thing, not a personal yeah. thing. Like I wouldn't care if I'm totally. just doing a meeting with it's like you guys, like, and we're doing like, oh, let's go over and edit or doing something in 3D. Like yeah. I don't care quite as much mm-hmm. as like yeah. what we feel like we're doing in the moment, but FaceTime feels way more personal and this feels a little mm-hmm. weird for that. This mm-hmm. to me feels like a perfect feature that will make sense in 10 years. Like the digital crown right now, when you rotate it, it'll go from VR to AR, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The goal is to always have it rotated so that you're just in AR. Is that not the case? Well, like in they, 10 years, they want you to always be in AR. Not necessarily. Mode. Yeah. They already want you to mostly be in AR. But, but you can switch it to but VR. But you can switch it to VR. Because sometimes being That's in... only because that's what we're capable of right now. Right. I don't think, like, if this was just an AR machine, that would be weird. Like, they have to add the VR things. No one's going to wear this for the functionality of what's currently available with It seems AR. like there's a lot There's a, a lot of potential use case in each. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, with AR, yeah. with having, like, your computer monitors up, but being able to see your coworkers around you, just like that feels like a kind of useful AR thing. But yeah. if I'm watching a movie, I don't want to see anything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, VR, I want, if I want to watch a sports game or a, a movie or something, I want full VR. But I feel like they're only adding those features because they have to because the headset is so big. Adding the VR features? Mm-hmm. Like, if they could have made the glasses yesterday or two days ago, whenever they announced this, they would have just done that. And then we but wouldn't then, have any oh, VR we're features. so far away I think that. that removes the yeah. ability to do most of the best stuff in VR, yeah. which is like, I've, we have cool games, we have cool experiences. If I want to like really immerse myself in this virtual world, mm-hmm. that was a lot of the interesting stuff too, is like they showed a bunch of content that was shot for it mm-hmm. and it was really, really immersive and good. It was. And I think if you don't have the ability to shut oh. out the outside environment, you don't fully appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Um, we appreciate y'all uh, for sticking with us through the Gen 1 of this podcast, but we're ready to move on to Gen 2, where you can see our eyes through our headsets. So. So. Not now, Chief. I'm in the zone. I can subscribe. I'm watching a movie. I'm watching you like this. Or if you thumbs up in XR, does it like this? <laughs> if you thumbs up in XR, does it thumbs up in real life? It just waits four seconds and then puts a bunch of thumbs up around. Fun fact, audience, if you subscribe in XR, you subscribe in real life.